Hey Game Makers, Pixelated Pope here, and today we are talking about creating UI in Game Maker. We are going to start simple and talk about just making clickable buttons, but by the end I'll be showing off UI that respects the dynamic aspect ratio and can even be scaled while maintaining relative positions. And we are going to build all this UI using the Room Editor. Before I show the demo, let me explain something real fast. I've often said that my channel is targeted more at an intermediate to advanced user, and this is going to be one of those videos. I'll not be going line by line explain every single step. Instead, I'll be explaining a problem, my method for solving that problem, and that's about it. Nothing I say in this video should be taken as gospel or as a perfect solution for all related issues. It shouldn't even be thought of as the best way to solve this particular problem, but hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding of the challenges that UI can present and will have more knowledge to help tackle those challenges in your project. If you do have questions applying this to your project, as I imagine many people will, please join the Discord server linked below and ask in the help channels. I and other members of the server will do our best to assist you. All right, let's get started. So I have here a basic UI. This UI is specifically for uh, selecting the aspect ratio for my game. By default, it's 16 by 9. So there it is, unchanged. But if my game supports other aspect ratios, I can change it. Not important right now, let's just talk about what these buttons are and how they work. So these buttons are each individual objects and they are being drawn in the GUI layer. So if I come over here, I can move my camera around and these buttons continue to work because they're drawn and all the collision detection is done in the GUI layer. So how is that accomplished? I've seen other videos online on YouTube talking about collision detection with buttons that are in the, the GUI layer and it's kind of complicated. It doesn't have to be though. So let's go look at the code and I'll explain how collision detection with the mouse and these buttons on the GUI layer work. Okay, my camera's kind of in the way, isn't it? Okay, so we've got our resources over on the left, like good old GMS 1.4 and I've got my objects and I've got this UI parent. Every UI element you see in my HUD uh, is on the GUI layer and drawn as a, it's a child of this object. So let's pull this guy up because he's got all the magic in him. In the GUI event, you can see it's just drawing itself. So nothing fancy there. So let's go look at the step event. So in the step event, this is my collision detection right there. Position meeting, mouse GUI X, mouse GUI Y. What's mouse GUI X and Y? That if you type that out right now, it's not going to change colors for you. So back here in my create event, I knew I was going to be typing this sort of thing out a lot. Device mouse X to GUI zero zero because I'm on, you know, I'm making a Windows game, not a mobile game that'll have multi-touch. So I always am going to be using device zero. So when you've got a button in the GUI layer, the device mouse X to GUI will always be able to click on it if you've positioned it right in your room. So what's important to know, and let's switch over to the room uh, real fast and talk about this. Uh, let me turn a few of these things off. Okay, notice where I have these buttons in this whole menu positioned in my room, right? It's positioned as if the view is in the top left corner all the time. In fact, that's what this layer is. This layer represents my default view and the view is in the top left corner. You would be able to see all of this and that's it. So if you lay out your objects with this positioning in mind, then all of the normal collision functions, their, their X and Y coordinates will just, they'll be fine. It'll just work. So let me switch back real fast. Uh, so here in the draw event, since this, element should only ever be drawn in the draw GUI event, we don't want to draw anything in the normal draw event. And that's why I've got this block of code here that doesn't do anything. It's just a comment to prevent the draw self default logic from occurring for this object. You know, if you're just making a very simple game with some buttons, you only support a single aspect ratio, which is totally fine, then this is all you need. Just position your buttons relative to the view uh, being in the top left corner in your room, and then you're good. The buttons will work with just position meeting, mouse position X, mouse position Y, and the object you want to see if you're moused over. Simple as that. 
But obviously things get a lot more complicated when you start taking dynamic resolutions into account. Since you're here on my channel, I think there's a good chance that you've probably seen my dynamic resolution and aspect ratio tutorial from a couple of years ago. The question I got more often than just about any other question once people got it working is, how do I position my buttons? And, you know, and so many people just build a room that is their menu and they drag and drop buttons and then they add the dynamic resolution tutorial logic to it. And now their menu is all squished to the left side and it looks awful. So how do you handle dynamic resolutions? So let's pull up the demo again and show off this current solution. I've got not just a menu, a very, you know, a complicated menu here, but I've got UI elements that are, you know, this should always be in the bottom right corner. This should always be in the bottom, you know, center, top left. And then I've got this text up here that should always be in the top right. So when I change resolutions, if I go super wide, what would happen on a lot of other people's project is that the things that should be in the center and should be on the far right corner will be slide, slid over because they won't know that it needs to be positioned differently because everything is usually positioned based on the top left corner of your room. So let's see what happens with this. The display settings is still perfectly centered. And then this guy's still in the bottom right. This guy's now in the top right. And this guy's perfectly centered. What about going to portrait? When you switch to portrait, all sorts of things can go bad. If you're building a game from mobile and you support rotating the device to go between landscape and portrait. Uh, in fact, this isn't even perfect because you can see. Uh, so yeah, this is centered. Great. When I click OK, well, now my instructions are on top of my health bar. But everything else works. This is in the bottom right. This is still centered. And the menu is still displaying properly. You know, they're anchored to a specific part of the screen, which is, as a designer, that's what you do. Where do you want this? Oh, I want it in the bottom middle. Where do you want this? I want it in the bottom right. And that's how we're going to solve this problem. We need to tell elements in your UI, not just where to position themselves, but what are they anchored to and where should they get their new position from when things change. So let's explain how I did that. So going back to the room editor, I've got this grid, right? Let's talk about this grid for a second. So this grid is just a sprite that I've dropped on its own layer called guide. I designed my UI based around this. So let's look at this display menu real fast. The display settings are all centered, right? Everything, no matter what, I want this whole menu to be relative to the center point of the screen. Let me show you what I've done. I've set up some variables. This is the first time I've used variable definitions. They allow some cool things in the room editor. And since we're using the room editor, I thought it'd be nice to try and take advantage of them, but this isn't necessarily the best solution for this. But you can see I have three variables that my UI can handle, and you can have as many of these as you want, but the core one is anchor. And I have an enum, a list of enums, which is just where do you want to anchor? And these, these alignments should look familiar. They're very similar to the default ones in a sprite when you set the origin. So you can say, I want this position, this object positioned to the middle right or the middle left. And then that's, we're going to use that variable to position the object. So let's, let's go back to the room editor and let's see what would happen if I took this guy, double clicked on him, clicked variables. He's, they're all anchored to middle center because they move as a unit. So I want them all anchored to the same point. So what about this guy? What if I said top center and him to bottom right? Looks perfectly normal. Switch to 21 by nine. Still centered, still at the top. And since these are the same vertical height, nine and nine, it still appears in the correct position, but it's not. It, I mean, it is, but it won't be if I switch to any of these other ones. But this guy is sitting over here. Instead of being lined up over here, since we aligned him to the bottom right corner, as that changed, his position changed. So let's go to one to one. Now he's centered, right? So this is all sorts of wrong. And over here, still centered. Now this guy's floating way up here. It's chaos, right? So setting the anchor point is key to getting these elements to be positioned properly as your aspect ratio is changing. So how does this work? 
that that's the real question. How did I do this? And it's really not too difficult. Let's look at object UI parent and let's go to user event zero. User event zero is what I call on every UI element when the code that changes the size of the screen and thus the size of the GUI layer says, hey, you guys need to reposition yourselves. This, this is how it does it. It does a with statement and calls user event zero on all of the UI elements. So we get a few variables at first. We get the GUI size, uh, the view guide size. So you can see I'm just grabbing uh, sprite guides width and height. And then I calculate where the center positions vertically and horizontally will be for those uh, the, the guide. And then I get the start location for uh, the current object. Now this is important because as I said, we're using the room editor. So you drag and drop the item in the room and then that is its start X and start Y. So if we know the start X and the start Y, we know the width and the height of the guide and we know the anchor point that we want item to be positioned relative to, that's all. That's everything, that's all we need. We can, for any resolution, calculate where that thing should be positioned. These two lines right here, 15 and 16, after I've gathered all these variables, I use them to calculate the horizontal positions and the vertical positions that this object could be positioned dependent on its anchor point. Let's look at the horizontal ones first. This is left, this is center, and this is right. If it's anchored to the left side, so any left top, left middle, left bottom, doesn't matter, any of the left uh, anchor points, we're just gonna use their X start because our room positions are already based off the left side of the screen, so no, we don't really need to change anything. Now center is where it starts getting a little complicated. We do this in kind of two phases. We take the current GUI width and divide it by two because we're centered. So we need our center point in our width of our GUI. And then we take the center point of the guide and the subtract the start location of the object. And that will tell us how many pixels to the left or to the right this object was from the center point in the default view. And then we just subtract that from the new center point for the current GUI width. We do basically the exact same thing for the right, but instead of starting at the center point of the current display width, we start at the very right side of the current display width and then subtract the same thing. And that'll tell us how many pixels away from the right side our X value was in the room editor. We do the exact same thing, but with our height variables and our Y variables for the vertical positioning. Now, I could have organized this a little bit differently because right now, every single object knows where it could be either left, middle, right, or top, center, bottom, whatever. It knows where it could be for all of those possibilities, which isn't really necessary because the anchor point doesn't change, could, but it doesn't uh, once your game is running. So I really only need to calculate two values, but I like the way this code looked and the way it was organized. so. I'm gonna leave it this way. So then I just do a switch on the anchor and the anchors are enums. And then I set the X and Y based on uh, their anchor point and these values in this array. So I take the left one and the top one, take the center and the top, you know, it's just, it's super simple. Finally, I have this right here, the active position. Uh, this is more to do with the way I'm animating elements in and out. The active position is when the element is visible and active, where is it? And then I have an inactive position as well, or rather an offset, which is move it here when it's going deactivated. That's something you can look into the example project for and examine how I do the animations with twerp and everything. Uh, I think it's pretty cool uh, because none of these individual objects really have anything besides where do I move them to, which I, I could have made these instance variables as well and modified these in the room editor. And then you wouldn't really have anything in any of these objects. They're all just, that's all I got is where they go when they're moving off screen. If you take anything away from this video, this is what it should be. When you have an element, 
try and think about where it is anchored. Is it anchored to the center of the screen, the bottom left, bottom right, top left? Where do you want it to be as your resolution changes? That That's important to know. And then understanding these calculations for once you know what it's anchored to, how do you find the new position based on an original position and original perceived size? That's that's the most important thing here. Nothing else really matters once you've got that concept. Again, I want to reiterate that this isn't the perfect solution. It's not going to work for everything. But with that concept in mind, you can run wild with this. And that's all I really wanted to say. It's, it's a complicated topic, and there was no real way to simplify it to something that can be universally applied to every project. As you are playing games that support different resolutions, try to notice what UI elements are positioned relative to. How do things change when the resolution changes? What stays the same? You may learn some interesting tricks by observing the pros. Don't forget to download the example project down below and mess around with it. If you have any questions, I highly recommend joining our GameMaker Discord community, which is also linked down below. And I want to thank my generous patrons for allowing me to run this channel ad-free. If you'd like to help support the channel, get access to all my assets, vote on future tutorial topics, and read written tutorials, check my Patreon page linked in the description and at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Now go make something awesome.